Welcome back to Monroe Live. We are not in the office today. We are at Kettering University at Kettering's GM Vehicle Mobility Research Center. And we will be looking at this Nimbus vehicle before us. Now, on one of the last videos, I was reading through some of the comments and a few people said that you should start a Monroe University. Now, I've talked to Sandy and he is very clear that having a degree to work for him is not a requirement. Your abilities and your mindset is most important to him. That being said, 20% of the employees for Monroe and Associates receive their degree right here at Kettering University, including Corey, Ben, Sue, me, Tyler, Scott, many people that you've seen on some of the videos. We even have students at Kettering, roughly six of them, who co-op with Monroe and Associates coming back and forth. Alex, who is in the Rivian door video, is actually here at school now. She'll be back at Monroe in about three months. So let's look at this Nimbus vehicle. This is a prototype for a three-wheeled electric vehicle. Uh, there is a market for something like this, um, and this has some unique features about it beyond just a scooter. So let's talk to Lee Hang, who is the founder of Nimbus, and he can give us some more introductory details. All right, so uh, this is our prototype. Um, it has two seats. So the doors are off right now. Normally there's doors. Um, so this is an enclosed two-person vehicle, a possibly enclosed. Normally it's enclosed. Uh, okay. You can take the doors off if you, you know, want to enjoy the beach or whatever. Um, so there's two seats, you know, there's one in the front, one, one in the back for the passenger. Um, one of the cool things about it is it's driven with a steering wheel. So it means any, uh, any car driver can get into the vehicle and drive it. So if I was looking at something this size and I was trying to make a comparison, at first you'd want to say, oh, that's similar to having a scooter around, but it's not. It doesn't drive the same way. It doesn't behave the same way. Correct. Yep. Scooter or any two wheel vehicle takes some amount of skill to be able to drive. Uh, with our vehicle, you don't have to think about the balancing. So the vehicle actually leans into a corner, but you don't have to learn any of that. It just does that automatically. So when I'm going to be driving this shortly and I'm going to make a corner, this is going to lean on me. So I'll have to learn how to expect it. Yeah. I mean, the first time might be a little bit, you know, surprising, but you'll get used to it pretty soon and uh, I think you're gonna have a good time, so. Okay, so now you said this is a prototype. How many iterations of prototypes have you gone through so far? We went through about four iterations. All right. Now, how far do you think you are from being able to have something that you can actually produce and sell? So we're planning for uh, end of next year for production. Okay, and what would the price point be? Under $10,000. All right, all right or $200 to rent. All right, so if I got in this thing, what do I need to know? So it's just like a car. Um, you know, you have your steering wheel, um, brake and, and, and uh, throttle, just like a car. You can adjust it if you want okay. from the front. Um, here's your Prindle, so it's in park right now. Uh, normally we have this screen working, so this screen with the screen you can, uh, you know, see the speed of the vehicle, the state of charge, and other other, uh, you know, information you want to see. Um, and it's kind of the perfect vehicle for in the city because you know a car is really just too cumbersome. Um, this vehicle is really easy to park. You can park it nose in, so you can find a lot of really good parking spots you couldn't find. Um, you know, with a car, so, and, uh, you know, it's, it, it's got a passenger room uh, in the back. You can also put storage, like groceries or whatever you want in the back. Um, there's a luggage rack in the back as well. You can put extra stuff there. Now, if it's not obvious, I am not a small person. <laughs> so, it was not too difficult for me to get in this. And I had asked you in advance if whether or not there was a weight restriction, especially for a prototype. And you said no. No. You said basically up to about six foot four. 
Yep. Um, you should be able to somewhat comfortably drive this. Yep. And I can see that. Um, so I'd like to go ahead and take this for a ride. Yeah, let's do it. So I do like the idea of having a seatbelt. Uh, it gives you an, incense, an increased sense of safety. Also, this could come equipped with doors, so you do have an enclosed vehicle, somewhat of a roll cage. So if I did tip over, I would hope that I would have something between me and road rash. Um, so let's see how this thing goes. Turn it back into drive. And here we go. So as I turn this wheel, the vehicle is automatically tilting to the side. Now, what I'm feeling, it feels to tilt more to the steering wheel position than it does to speed. So I could slow right down, and right now I'm just barely coasting, and I'm still getting tilt as I steer. But, oh, it's straightening up more and more the slower I'm going. So as I'm speeding up, that tilt is increasing. All right. Let's go on to their little track area over here. Now, depending on where you're at in the country or what country you're in, you may be required to have a helmet while driving a vehicle like this. Um, the roll cage or built-in roll cage should help you quite a bit, so you wouldn't always need that. And I'm told that this is equipped to have a top speed of roughly 50 miles an hour. With some of them capable of going up to 75 miles an hour. My grandma actually just crashed her motorcycle. <laughs> she did not have a helmet on. So of course she's in a neck brace and will be for a while. And the week after she crashed, my mom showed up at my house driving her brand new Harley. But she showed up wearing a helmet, so I was quite thankful for that. I'm actually quite comfortable with the way this is driving. It's pretty quick. I'm liking the way it maneuvers. Now, this track at Kettering, this is not a racetrack. This is set up more for testing autonomous vehicles or for testing ADAS systems. They'll, um, they will actually rent out this space for different vehicles that are doing testing. Uh, so, Nimbus has gotten with them and they are testing out their vehicle here at Kettering. Nimbus is located in Ann Arbor, Michigan. So how was it? Going down that hill, it was picking up speed without the foot on the pedal. Uh -huh. I don't know if it was a sticky pedal mm. or... So every time when I went around that curve, I just move right over to the brake and just yeah, like yeah. ride the brake going down the curve. We don't have regen enabled, so that's, okay. that's probably why. And I, uh, I have not driven very many electric vehicles. The first one that I actually drove with the regenerative braking was the Rivian. And it bugged me because it was braking when I didn't want it to. I was expecting to be able to coast, taking my foot off the gas as I'm coming up to a stoplight, and it's applying the brakes faster than I would want to apply the brakes when I had someone driving behind me. Um, so I was just not as comfortable during that. But I could see that difference here. I would probably feel more comfortable with the regenerative braking coming down that hill. Um, I did notice with the tilt, if I'm driving a motorcycle or if I'm driving a moped, I'm activating the tilt. And it took a minute for me to get used to or to anticipate when this was going to tilt on its own. Mm -hmm. um, it, when I say a minute, I literally mean a minute. It wasn't much more than that. So I could start to feel it and start to anticipate it. And I got much more comfortable as I went. So with this vehicle, I was trying to figure out, all right, who's the customer? If I was selling this vehicle, now I'm not a salesman. I don't want to sell your vehicle. That's going to be your job. <laughs> uh, and who would want me to sell it anyway? I'm a bald fat guy. So I'm not a spokesman, anything like that. Is this the right vehicle for me? The answer is no. 
I drive a 110 mile round trip to work. I live out in the country with bad roads. It's a 20 minute drive for me to get to the grocery store. But just because it's not for me doesn't mean it's not for someone. So I was trying to go through my mind and I have a few ideas of who the customer of this would be and I wanna see what your thoughts are. So the first one, I think it's fortunate that we're here at a university because a lot of universities do not allow, to have, do not allow students to have a car on campus either the first or second year. Now, if this could be negotiated as a smaller vehicle, at a price point of $10,000, that would actually be very practical if you were gonna be using this for four or five years while you're on a campus. Now, of going past that, all right, you are a retiree. There are a lot of people in Florida who live in retiree community, communities who drive only golf carts. Okay, so someone like that, this could be an enclosed vehicle, and at a price point of $10,000, you are actually less expensive than most golf carts. Yeah. Those things get really expensive. Let's say I lived in the suburbs, and I had no need to go in the city, or no need to go in the city often. Going around a suburban community with something like this would be perfect, because you're not going to be going more than 30, 35 miles an hour on an average day, and you're most likely not going to have very long lengths. All right, then I started thinking about corporate campuses. Let's say you're a commuter, like me, but let's say you were fortunate enough to either take a bus or take train going to a corporate campus. Now, you wanna go out for lunch. If something like this was available, either owned by the company or available as short-term rentals, that would be very convenient to go out during the day, do what you need to do, go back, and then yes, maybe you're taking that train home. Now, once you start to talk about short-term rentals, you're also talking about college campuses, short-term rentals around there. But I don't like to rely on the short-term rental as to be as the complete market. And I don't see that being the complete market for this vehicle. Um, so I think that there are many different ways that this would make sense. Now, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I think what you mentioned, you know, those are all really good use cases. Um, people live in the city, that's, that's one of our bigger markets. Um, and when I think of the city, I think the worst thing is parking. Parking, yeah. Parking in the city, I think, would even be worse than trying to maneuver around camp or move, maneuver around traffic. Now, you do have more maneuverability with something like this, mm -hmm. so that is good there. Yep. But if you could come up with a parking method or if there were parking garages that would allow tighter areas, many have motorcycle, moped parking. Yep. Whether you can negotiate this to fit into that space, it does give you a benefit. For sure, yep. Okay. Um, Lane splitting as well in places where you can lane split. Mm -hmm. California, you know, lots of par parts of Europe. Um, that will make you faster through traffic. Okay. So is there anything that is not here that we could talk about as a feature, something we haven't talked about? We know the doors aren't on it. Yeah, th so the, yeah. Doors, the doors are not on, but the doors are actually one of the coolest features okay. because um, the way we've designed the doors is we've uh, made the motion so that it doesn't quite open like a, like a normal door. Um, so it's, it's a combination of a sliding and swing door, and we call it a sling door. And the, the door fully opens uh, and only takes up about this much width. So if we're talking about that parking issue, if this had a door which is roughly four feet wide and I was mm. trying to open it up, well, it kills that parking. Exactly. But it doesn't function that way. Yep. Yep. Okay. So it fully, it opens and it kind of leaves an opening here so you can get out very easily. Okay. Um, so you can park very close next to another car or a wall or whatever. Now, the benefit to having doors over top of just a scooter mm -hmm. is you do have some security. I could leave things locked in here, secured, which you could not do if some scooter laying up against a tree. Uh, what about your storage options? I see the cargo net here, yep, which would probably be an net. option, may not be in all vehicles, mm -hmm. may not make it to production yet. We do have a cargo net over the rear seat. Yep. So backpacks, groceries, things like that could be secured. And then you have this storage rack, luggage rack on the back. Uh, have I described those things properly or have you envisioned any other uses? Yeah, yeah, I think you, um, you described it pretty well. There's also a little compartment behind the uh, passenger seat that's lockable. Okay. And then um, in the front here as well, there's a little box here. Um, and then, you know, a, a little cubby here for, for your uh, 
knickknacks or whatever. So let's say I was on vacation, I was at the beach, I was driving with the doors off, I still have a lockable storage. Exactly, yep. That's good. Yep. Um, the other thing that's cool about the vehicle I'll point out here is the battery is actually uh, swappable. So you can take the batteries out. And for a lot of people living in cities that don't have access to a charging station, um, you know, char charging plug, um, you can actually take the batteries out by removing it like this. And then you can pull these out and bring it into your home to charge them and then put them back in. Thank you for that. So that is a big criticism that I have. And it would not apply to your vehicle, but it applies to my situation. I do want an electric vehicle. I really, really do. However, I drive nearly 40,000 miles a year. At 40,000 miles a year, I'm not as much worried about battery range of a lot of electric vehicles. I'm worried about battery life. And if I were to take out a loan to pay that off in six years, more than likely I'm going to need a battery replacement before I've even paid off the loan. You have swappable batteries. So if there is an issue, you, uh, the customer can switch out your batteries very, yep. very easily. Um, and you could possibly even carry extras if you wanted to go beyond the range. What would the range of this target range be? 94 miles. 94 miles, which most people who do commute, commute less than 40 miles per day. So even commuters, you have double the range that would be needed there, depending on weather conditions, road conditions, things like that. Yep. All right. So that's practical. That makes sense. I like the fact that they can switch them out. Mm -hmm. um, although when you see stuff like that, you also worry about, is someone gonna steal them? Well, you can take them out and keep them in your house. All right. Well, thank you very much, Lihan. I, yeah, I liked you. playing with this. Um, looking to possibly have something on the road within a year to two years. Uh, I'm not gonna hold you to that. I know how these things go. So best of luck. All right, thank you. Yep, have a good day. Yep, you too. Thank you for watching Monroe Live. I hope you enjoyed this uh, little uh, excursion, this little uh, field trip from the office today. And if you have not subscribed, please subscribe so you can see some of the future videos and have a good day. Yeah.